Greetings America, Bruce here, and I need your help in asking the so-called nonpartisan commission on presidential debates to include Governor Gary Johnson. But first, to understand my reasons, we have to go back to 2010, where, after the birth of my first child, I found myself asking, what kind of future are we creating? Now, as a scientist and researcher, I, of course, first had to look at what the data was telling me. And when I looked at the economy, what I found was that it was working really well for those in the top 5%, but not anywhere near as good for all the rest of us. When I looked at the government, I found a growing pile of unsustainable national debt. And when I looked at the environment, I found an increasing danger for massive devastation that was due entirely to an old energy source that was only becoming less efficient and more risky to extract. Yet at the same time, I also knew that we lived in an age with fantastic technology for dealing with just about any problem. So the next obvious question was, why? Why is it that we cannot use all our collective power to do better at addressing and solving these problems? And as I traced each problem to its source, I found that it always came back to our government. A government that is supposed to be of, by, and for the people, but instead, what I found was a government of, by, and for the insiders. Now, as I researched this further, I eventually came across the work of a Harvard Law professor named Lawrence Lessig. And what Lessig argued, that it wasn't just bad politicians and bad people. Instead, he argued that it was a system of corruption. Now, again, being a researcher and scientist, I had to go on and build a mathematical model of this system of corruption. And while it is far too big to explain in this short video, I encourage all the other nerds out there to watch the complete overview linked here and in the description. But the bottom line of this model has proven that we now live in Orwellian times where we like to say that all citizens are equal, but in reality some citizens are undeniably more equal than others. And that is because the system is rigged, and it is rigged because of three main corruptions. The first is a corruption of the right to vote and of citizens themselves. After a steady erosion of voting rights, we now find that a smaller and smaller percentage of eligible citizens are registered to vote. And after being told over and over and over again that our votes don't really count or they don't really matter, more and more of us have come to believe the lie and stopped going to the polls altogether. The second corruption is the gerrymandering that allows politicians to draw their own political boundaries and use winner-take-all elections to make sure that 85% of the seats in the House are safe for their party. Which is why we also have solid red and solid blue states that leave an estimated 89 million voters without any real representation. And the third and final corruption is the financial dependence that we have forced upon politicians expecting to win, which requires more and more and larger and larger private contributions to run for a public office. So much so that even when you zoom in all the way, you can only just barely see small dollar contributions, which are now outnumbered 233 to 1. Even more insane is that compared to lobbying expenditures, all the millions spent on campaigns are but a small part of the influence wielded by the political insiders. With billions like this, it's no wonder more than half of representatives leaving or even forced out of Congress move on to become lobbyists. And the overall product of these three factors is a system of corruption that has been rigged to make some people more equal than others. A system that has created a Congress, not as Madison stated in Federalist 52, dependent upon the people alone, but rather a government that is almost entirely dependent upon the insiders. So here we are, almost six years later, in the middle of one of the most negative elections in a generation, where only a tiny fraction, a mere 14% of eligible voters, have decided the major party candidates. And when divided among likely voters, we find that during the presidential primaries, less than 10% picked Donald Trump, and less than 13% chose Hillary Clinton. As of the latest poll approved by the Commission on Presidential Debates, a full 13% of likely voters picked Governor Gary Johnson. That is more than enough reason to let Gary debate. And who knows, once millions of Americans that have no idea who Gary Johnson is hear what a true political outsider has to say, then maybe, perhaps just maybe, we can finally get to the root of that system of corruption and restore a government that stands not just for the insiders, but for the people as well. 
please visit bit.ly slash letgary to sign the petition asking the Commission on Presidential Debates to include Governor Gary Johnson. And thanks for watching.